Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing an additional aspect of the quadriceps muscles of the thigh, and that is the fact that there's actually a fifth quadricep muscle that most courses neglect. And I feel like it's kind of interesting. And sometimes when you get to more advanced courses, you'll talk about this one. And in addition, there's also a sixth one that's a little bit more variable. We'll talk about that in the next video. So historically, when you take usually undergraduate anatomy and physiology, you mention that there's four quadricep muscles, right? They're the knee extensors. You've got rectus femoris, which doubles as a hip flexor. And then you've got vastus intermedius, which is deep to that, vastus lateralis, and vastus medialis, right? But it turns out that there is a fifth quadricep muscle that's present in most individuals, and that is what's called articularis genus. Sometimes when you look this up online, you'll see it as articularis genu. So let's dive into this muscle. Let's talk about its structure, and then we'll get into all this good stuff over here. So I have this picture of the anterior thigh musculature. Let's actually take a look at this and talk about some relative, uh, relevant anatomy. So right here in the center, we've got rectus femoris, right? It's one of the four major quadricep muscles. Here's sartorius as a landmark. Uh, if we didn't know any better, this muscle can tell us uh, what side is lateral and what side's medial, because proximally sartorius begins laterally, and as it goes distally, it runs medial. So this muscle right here where my mouse is, that's vastus medialis. This one over here is vastus lateralis. Okay? Um, down here, I'll zoom in a little bit further so you can see that. This is our patella. And then up top right here, this is our patellar tendon or quadriceps tendon. Again, you can see all three of these quadriceps inserting on that patellar tendon. Additionally, deep to rectus femoris, which we can't see here, would be vastus intermedius, also inserting on that patellar tendon. Again, I mentioned here's our patella. And then here is our patellar ligament which is ultimately going to attach on that tibial tuberosity. And whenever these four quadriceps muscles contract, we get knee extension. And so they're going to do this by not only pulling on the patella, but they're also pulling on that patellar ligament and pulling the tibial tuberosity. And really everything is being pulled proximally, and that's going to allow us to extend the knee. Okay? Now, if we strip away all of these muscles, we'll strip away rectus femoris vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and even the underlying vastus intermedius, well then we're left with this right here. We're left with just one muscle, and that's right here. And this is the same picture virtually, it's just that all four of those quadriceps have been removed. And this small muscle is articularis genus. Okay? It is very small. Okay? It's very small because it's not going to be moving a bone. Okay, we're not going to be moving the tibia with this muscle. In fact, we're actually just going to be moving a little bursa, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But again, here's your patella right here, just for reference. Here's your patellar ligament. You can see that attaching down here on the tibial tuberosity. Okay? But notice that uh, this articularis genus is not attaching on the patellar tendon. The patellar tendon itself, or quadriceps tendon as we call it, has been removed. So it does not insert on that. So it cannot extend the knee. It cannot participate in that at all. So that begs the question, what is the function of articularis genus? Well, its origin and insertion, particularly insertion, will give us a clue as to its function. So articularis genus originates on the distal femur, as you can see right here, deep to vastus intermedius. So again, I mentioned we had to peel off all of those quadricep muscles, including vastus intermedius, in order to see articularis genus. So it's deep to vastus intermedius. In some individuals, it is blended with the vastus intermedius and you cannot distinguish these two. So whether or not you as an individual have a distinct uh, articularis genus that is distinct from the vastus intermedius is genetically determined. But it originates on the distal femur right there. And then it inserts on the suprapatellar bursa. Now bursa are fluid-filled sacs. They're actually uh, composed really of the synovial membrane, and they just contain uh, fluid, that is synovial fluid. And what they help to do is reduce the friction either when a muscle's moving over a bone or sometimes when bone is moving over bone, so that way you're not having things in direct contact with one another. So they reduce friction, and 
the Articularis genus inserts on that suprapatellar bursa. So before we go any further, let's actually look at that anatomy. So here's a sagittal section, uh, really, of the knee joint. Okay, Up top, proximally, we have the femur, of course. Down here, we have the tibia. You can even see the anterior cruciate ligament right there. Up here, here's the quadricep muscles. These are going to be representing the four major ones. Most likely, this is rectus femoris. Um, and you can see that uh, quadriceps tendon right there that's attaching on the patella. Okay, And then go down further, here's our patellar ligament that you can see moving distally to insert on the tibial tuberosity. Okay, So again, that's just review. But what we see right here is we see several bursa. Okay? Right here, for example, we see the infrapatellar bursa. This is actually a, a bursa between this patellar ligament and the uh, the anterior proximal tibia. And so what this bursa is for is to reduce friction between the patellar ligament and the tibia because they will run against each other, okay? And that could cause friction and all sorts of damage. Here's a pre-patellar bursa. This one is actually between the skin, connective tissue in the skin, and the patella. Okay, so it's gonna be designed to reduce friction between the connective tissue under the skin and the patella. But this is the one in question right here. Here's our suprapatellar bursa. So this bursa normally is gonna lie really between the patella and the distal femur on the anterior side, okay? And what we see here is the knee is already in extension here, but what we should imagine is, start, is starting out with the knee in some degree of flexion. So if we were to flex this knee, so bend it, what we would see is that the suprapatellar bursa would actually be more between this patella and the femur, okay? Now, the articularis genus is not shown here. It's more or less up here, and it's gonna insert on that suprapatellar bursa, okay? So the action of articularis genus is really to pull that suprapatellar bursa proximally during knee extension. I'll show you a, a diagram of this to hopefully explain why this is important. But it suffices to say that as you start in knee flexion, so your knee is bent, and as you contract your quads to go into knee extension, when you get into full knee extension, if you didn't have this muscle, then what would happen is the suprapatellar bursa would actually be a little bit down here. It wouldn't be pulled up as you see here, and it would be between the patella and the femur. And that would cause impingement because when we go into knee extension, this is the closed pack position for the knee joint. Everything's tight, everything's compact. The patella is really close to the femur there. And so what you would do is you would impinge that bursa and cause all sorts of damage. Okay, and you'd probably have some bursitis over time as a chronic injury. So what the articularis genus has to do is it pulls the suprapatellar bursa into this position as you see right here. So originally it would be more down here during flexion, but as you go into knee extension, it pulls that suprapatellar bursa proximally so that it doesn't become impinged under the patella between the patella and the femur. So that's very important. So let's take a look at a diagram to hopefully explain this. Now, this is what would happen if you didn't have the articularis genus. So right here you see the knee in some degree of flexion. Here's our femur, tibia. Here's the quads up here. Patellar tendon. Here's the patella, patellar ligament. Here's our suprapatellar bursa right here in the magenta. Okay. Now, as you go into extension, as you see right here, the quads contract. They, of course, pull the patella proximally. And if you had nothing to pull on the suprapatellar bursa, it would just stay in position, and it would sort of get crushed between the patella and the femur. That's suprapatellar impingement, and that's something we don't want. So what we have to have instead is we also have to have this articularis genus muscle, or I have here articularis genu. And so you see here, it's this muscle deep to vastus intermedius. It's attached to the femur, originates off of it. And you can see here, it's its tendon. It's inserting on that suprapatellar bursa. So rather than getting impinged under the patella, between the patella and the femur during extension, the articularis genus pulls that suprapatellar bursa proximally toward the quadriceps, so away from the knee joint. And it really prevents that bursa from being impinged between the patella and the femur. Okay? Um, so that's really the function of articularis genus. If you didn't have it or it got damaged and somehow was non-functional, uh, you would end up probably over time with suprapatellar bursitis because that bursa would be crammed 
underneath the patella. And that's not good because the, during knee extension, you've got that joint in the closed pack position. Okay? Now, a couple other things here before we conclude this video. Uh, the innervation of this muscle is the same as the rest of the quadriceps. It's the femoral nerve. Again, that's going to be roots L2 through L4 of the lumbar plexus. And then its blood supply is via the lateral femoral circumflex artery. Okay? So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the articularis genus and where it fits in with the function of the quadriceps. If we really had to summarize this, the four major quadriceps that we're so used to hearing about, those are responsible for the mobility of the knee joint. They give you knee extension. Okay? Um, if you don't have those muscles, you don't extend the knee. But during knee extension, as we go toward full extension, 180 degrees, we get into the closed pack position for the knee joint. And everything's tight, everything's compact and compressed. And if we didn't have this articularis genus muscle, then that suprapatellar bursa would become impinged uh, underneath the patella. And that's not good. So we have this muscle to just pull up that really short distance, proximally, and that's all it takes to prevent that bursa from becoming impinged. Okay, so hopefully this video made sense to you and gave you some good information about this muscle. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.